Hello and welcome to another episode of Tour de Core. And Tour de Core, of course, is the show where we explore WordPress core. The major focus so far has been Gutenberg, which is going to be the new editing experience in WordPress 5.0. And the last few episodes, I kind of focused on creating a block initially, and then later on just uh, filtering um, and hooking into the image block to create an Unsplash connection with the Unsplash API. However, last week, I believe, uh, Gutenberg, um, and let me get the version straight, make sure I don't get it wrong. Uh, Gutenberg 2.2.0 came out, and with that, we finally have nested blocks. Now, I haven't had my hands on it yet. I haven't seen the default nested blocks. I haven't read through the documentation. It's gonna be fun. Um, so yeah, today's plan is to do that. Let's explore nested blocks and how they work and see what we can figure out. It's gonna be a fun ride. So, uh, I'd say the first thing I wanna try is just to see, you know, what nested blocks look like out of the box. Okay, so I'm going to create a new post. And let's see what we have. Um, do we have columns? We have columns, okay. So columns is our block that we insert. Okay, and by default, I can see we have just two paragraphs. And of course we can type something else uh, like image. <laughs> First of all, this doesn't look awesome, but that's fine. Um, there's plenty of time to iterate over this stuff, right? So let's go on and add an image. And let's see what else can we do. More options here. <clears throat> no. Okay. Uh, Column search and splash. Oof. Why is my oh my implementation has broken? It seems like it shouldn't be showing on everything. Oh, whoops. Okay. Well, we'll get to that probably next time. But anyway, what I want to figure out right now is what do we do with the columns? Three columns, four columns, five columns, six columns. Oh, that looks amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, do, we even, do we even have like full width editing experience? Maybe it's based on the theme? Huh. Hmm. Okay, well. That's definitely the first thing I see that columns don't seem to style very well yet just yet I'm sure I'm sure that will, that's something that will get fixed over time but right now it just looks a little eh. okay so yeah other than that I don't know if there's anything else um, that we can take a look at you know um, just creating a simple layout I guess so hello world because we're very original and I want to see how it looks on the front end actually uh, okay we're publishing Wait, did, did that publish okay there we go okay i mean on the front end it looks okay right it's decent we have two columns um i guess this image could could be wider oh yikes okay uh, interesting okay so so far nothing super impressive right and I mean that's just the first iteration obviously so there's 
lots more that's going to go in um, assuming into in here um, I'm expect do we have a call row no row okay so what do we have in terms of in terms of blocks layout blocks columns and widgets that's about it hmm. okay so yeah um inside of gutenberg i'm a little bit meh to be honest i mean i i don't i don't want to discredit the people that are working on this and i'm pretty sure that a whole lot of work went into actually getting this to creating this API for us to use and to make it work. So that's that's really impressive. Um, but yeah, if, if Gutenberg's going to compete with, okay, so we can move columns up and down. Okay, that's cool. Um, but I assume we cannot, uh -huh. yeah what if i cut this and paste it here nope okay so heading hmm. okay yeah it's it's okay it's not super impressive yet in terms of what we can do outside the box okay uh, I think that kind of satisfies my desire to test out uh, the actual implementation that comes in the plugin and obviously they labeled it as experimental so I I would probably not use it yet on my life side just because you don't know how it's gonna change you know I, uh, I expect them to change that pretend, like yeah it's it's quite possible that they We'll change something and then your content will not be quite the same after all gutenberg is still in development so it has not reached a stable api yet okay well uh, with that out of the way let's see what we can find in terms of documentation on nested blocks um and I guess we can see if they updated the handbook. Uh, Gutenberg handbook. Uh, <laughs> block types. Dynamic blocks. Block API. Wait, which are the deprecated blocks? Oh, that's how you deprecate blocks, right? Okay, um, Okay. I don't see, I don't see anything in here. So we have a couple of things that we can do. First of all, actually, I'm going to update my Gutenberg source. So that I can just browse through the source code much more efficiently than on GitHub. Yay, lots of branches. Okay, uh, so I'm a master right now. I would like to check out version 2.2.0. Uh, okay. Package lock. Okay, so we are up to date. Uh, let me close up some of these tabs. We're not going to use them today. Close, 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 close all the tabs. There we go. That's a little better. Now, um, first of all, let's look at how the columns 
block was implemented and then I'd say we can take it from there so let me find them components no blocks library columns okay so here's our columns block this is what its definition looks like <clears throat> External dependencies, WordPress, range control, inner blocks. Okay, so that that's definitely new. Um, I kind of peeked at that today, but didn't really get to read much about it. Block controls and block controls are okay. The that's not new. Inspector control, block controls. Okay, so inner blocks is the new thing that we have in here. Okay, and what do we see? And actually, let's go in and read the readme on inner blocks. If we can find that in here, readme. Because it, I peeked at it today and I saw that it has useful information about how to get started. Uh, okay. So it exports a pair of components which can be used in block implementation to enable nested block content. So that's what inner blocks is. It's kind of our API to nesting blocks. Inner blocks, edit implementation, simply render inner blocks, optionally with layouts of available nest areas. Then in the save implementation, render inner blocks content now we replace. But that's for static blocks. What about dynamic blocks? Hmm. Okay. That. Uh, keep that in mind. We'll we'll get hold that thought. Um, I do want to see what happens with dynamic blocks and nesting blocks and yeah, because it's not mentioned here at least not until this part okay so here's just an example they're giving us uh register we get register block type and in our blocks and then in our edit we just have a functional component that just returns a div and in our blocks and then in the save we return a div and in our blocks dot content okay that's that's cool um Note the block and render most a single inner blocks and inner blocks content element and edit and save respectively. Distinct inner arrangements of nested blocks refer to the layouts prop documented below. Okay, uh, so what that means is that you cannot have multiple placeholders for blocks to be dropped in. As in, well, you can, but you cannot use multiple. Um, instances of inner blocks and inner blocks content okay uh, that's just a note about the example above and that we should be wrapping our um, our elements, our saved output, and a wrapping tag. Okay, props, inner blocks, layouts. Okay, so layouts can be an array of objects or an object. Okay, so we define, we either give it an array of objects or we just give it a single object. Okay, and inner blocks content will generate a single continuous flow of block markup for nested content. Maybe advisable to use the CSS grid layout to assign layout positions. Okay, yeah, no support for older browsers, that's fine. 
You should consider how this might impact. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can assign, yes, as we said, either an object or an array of objects. So ungrouped layouts and grouped layouts. That's that's an important piece of terminology right there. Um, okay, so they're documented below. So in both case, each layout consists of a name, an icon, and a label. Okay. So the name is a slug to use in generating the layout class applied to the nested box. Okay. And I can present to the user moving between layouts and then a label that we display in the controls. Okay. Ungroup layouts. Enter blocks layouts normal. <laughs> wit wit. <laughs> wit wit. Um, and group layouts. I'm not super clear on this yet, um, but we'll just go with it as we keep reading more and just in the end it's 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 just a matter of trying it um you know to me it's much more efficient to try and tinker with the code after i've read some examples than to just spend two hours reading something i mean it varies of course okay so we have a columns block right and when the user changes the layout of a block from one column to another it's not sufficient to simply reassign the class name of the block to the new layout. Block up or down within the new column. Already present in the new layout. Okay. Block columns. So we have paragraph, column one, column one, column two. Okay. If the user moved the first notice the paragraph block to the second column. If they then proceed to move the block down, the block would be the last item in the markup. Move because it still exists in markup prior to the third paragraph. Okay. And here's a bad example. First paragraph, second, third. Column two, column one, column two. Okay, so the problem here is that um these don't flow in the correct order so i believe that this should actually be in here in the dom representation but let's see mark for each layout is kept grouped together okay yeah so you cannot have column two then column one then column two so okay that makes sense and that's it Oh, that was a lot, a lot of reading. <laughs> Just how I like it. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if we have much to do besides to ju just give it a try. Um, I guess let's go back and look at the columns and see how that works. Times from low dash. Huh. There's Leo configuration for a given number of columns. Okay. So if we have X amount of columns, then repeat, you know, that many times and give back the name of column dash, the number of the column, label column with the number and I can columns okay that's simple enough and that's it hmm okay all right so inside of inspector controls right so columns is part of our attributes 
that's fine and then and then specter controls we can change it as we saw in here yeah so when we focus on our columns layout um columns block sorry we see that we have columns right here and we can change that and so as the attribute changes we get to see a change and the configuration of the layouts as well so let's see what that looks like inside of react if we can oh yikes <laughs> that's a lovely tree um yep i love what else could one want besides a hundred levels nesting <laughs> oh it's so amusing okay um <laughs> now if they if they can only find actual columns okay we're getting there uh right here's our filter that goes in there that wraps the custom class name uh, yep custom class name that's the one that gutenberg provides by default oh there we go core columns okay so this is props attributes columns five yep and as we change this we obviously our props change as well so nothing out of the ordinary here and container i think this is key container and sort of classes or does inner box provide the container class potentially okay so here's uh that would be block yep okay container and this is the actual inner blocks component right here this and as we can see we're passing well they're passing the layouts in here okay so what can we do with this hmm obviously columns is done already so that's not too interesting to do but hmm here's the thing you don't have to have the same you know you don't have to have identical layout like like your layout groups can be different and Oh, how about that? Um, okay, okay, I know what. I know what I want to do. Um, I want to do one of those um, where it lists like the most recent three blog posts. Oh, well, we're gonna do that manually right now, but anyway, um, where it has the main one as a big image and then two little ones on the side or something. Okay. And probably we'll just use images for simplicity. Okay. Um, what happens if we add something here? This paragraph. Ooh. Okay, let's close that up real quick. And so once we're in here, what happens if we go? If we go down to two. Oh no, it, it deleted my... What? What? I mean... I don't have... I don't have a better solution, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Because it is... Like what? You're... It's a tough, tough decision to make. Um, and what I'm referring to right now is the fact that when we go down to two columns, my um, the block from my third column just disappears, which is not ideal. But at the same time, you know, like I I can see what will happen. Um, 
because what are you going to do are you going to move this block over to this column just because it yeah they can they can just assume that the layout groups are going to be identical and that's that's fair that, that's absolutely fair uh yeah so what i'm saying is that it makes sense something to keep in mind um if you are playing around with columns that and i'm guessing if i go down to two and i update okay so i haven't reloaded it's still here now okay let's update again and reload and i'm guessing that third column will the block in the third column will disappear after reloading the page let's see what it doesn't no huh I don't know if that's a side effect or something. Hold on, let me let me try something else. Okay, so back down to two columns. We'll update this. And I'm going to go into incognito real quick and see if we're gonna still get the same thing. Because that's that's interesting. If that's how it works. Let's get rid of this. Um What about on the front end? Does it render on the front? Huh. Okay. Whoa. Hey, that. No. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just a little bit confused. <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, we have some quirks still that need to be ironed out, but. Huh. Could we use nested block to add scroll animation on inner block? It's a good question. Um, scroll animation on inner block. So are you saying like a parallax effect? So if we have um, like the way we have this, the columns, and then it would apply the parallax effect on one of the nested blocks. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely a caveat here. If you use the columns and you reduce the number of columns, but you do have a block and one of the columns that disappear it will still show up on the front end that was that was funny to see i want to oh do i have it on my side i mean right now it it just gets covered by this um fixed nav bar up at the top is that what you're referring to when we scroll the fade in oh Oh, okay, okay. I, I see what you're saying. Um, uh, you're talking about our company website. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, hmm. Right. Stuff shows in here. It's a good question. I do want to see what what we have access to inside of inside of the save event. Um, of, in the save callback. Like what is what is in here? What is in their blocks dot content? How can we change that? That's that's the thing I I wanna I wanna see and explore. And definitely I wanna see what happens if we don't give the inner blocks content as if we're saving a dynamic block. So that's that's definitely definitely something to check out. Um Okay, so I played around with this and we found one caveat, which is deleted columns don't really get deleted, which is good and bad. 
but yeah we'll we'll see how the durations go uh over time anyway though, let's go back to our plugin right now and nope nope to the core gutenberg okay so npm run watch react okay so we're gonna start watching for changes and then let's create a new block in here and let's do nested block Ooh, yeah we'll see uh nested block test right just stuff of course and I start off with our hello world block as a template and we'll change as we need to okay nested block test uh, yeah let's actually rename that nested test block okay delete this one we don't need it okay and nested test block extends our base component uh, date content we'll get to this in a little bit but from the OP blocks we also want to now import inner block well dot dot box is that where it is hold on let's take a look in the console the op blocks inner. okay yes that's correct um and actually i'm going to disable the other plugin for unsplash just for right now at least because it's spamming the console and it's doing a lot of other stuff okay so enter blocks from the op blocks and then we render block description didn't block description get deprecated i have a feeling it might have Yeah, it is deprecated. Use a description block property. I read this. I read about this in one of the one of the release blog posts. Description block property instead. I uh, okay. So I'm guessing. get rid of the block description get rid of it from here as well and it says description property okay so I'm guessing it's here but I have no idea no Gutenberg TDC nested test okay nested test dash icons let's pick an icon that we like and <laughs> I like this one might not be super appropriate for what we're doing but that's fine okay and yeah let's see what what happens here uh of course i need to actually include i need to actually include the the file so hello world block 
TC Gutenberg nested test. Same here. Nested test. For anyone watching, I'm sorry if it's confusing switching between uh, <clears throat> the way we did things with the uh, Unsplash integration, where we have um, what was it called? The create block, Gutenberg create block. Is that what it was called? Create Guten block, right? Um, and this, you know, very minimalistic setup. It's a little confusing, but yeah, it, it will get you to see different approaches and hopefully help and being able to recognize what's going on. Okay, so once we register, we want to enqueue it. Nested test. Anywhere else that we're referencing hello world? Nope, that's it. Okay. So now when we reload the page, we should be able to. Hello world is not the one. Oops, see. There we go. Save that. Reload the page. Okay. <clears throat> nest test. Okay. Right now, nest test, we don't really have anything. We have our. Oh. I'm going to change in control input. Really? Oh, inspector controls, text controls, deprecator use the OP components, text control. Okay, that's that's good to know. Good to know. Huh. So OP components. Did the API change? Let's see. Um, that's the test. Ah, I don't want this one. Oh my. Blocks, components, text control. Is that still the same? Text control, label, value, on change. Huh, so what gives? Interesting. Label, help type, value. Text. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out why this is happening. It shouldn't be happening in theory. Nested test block. Hmm. So what is getting changed here? Oh, is it because of, oh, because value is null? Probably. Probably that's the, okay. So what if we have content and then a default of an empty string? How about that? Because I think if you provide value the value attribute is null. It's gonna consider it to be. Yeah, there we go. Okay, okay, so that's what was going on. Uh, 
followers. Ah, okay. There is our message. So what was happening here was that when we create our nested test initially, our message was actually undefined. Let's see. So if we comment this out, we'll reload and actually let's give it some default for the color. I like this one. If I can get to it. Attributes for there we go. So let's have some default for the color at least. So that we can actually see the the block when it comes in. Yes, okay, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna just explain this real quick in case someone that is not really familiar with React and the way it works. Um, so there's two types of component uh, of components inputs. Um, and so you can have input fields uh whether it's you know input type anything text area um uh, select drop down is that all of them more or less so you can have them be controlled or uncontrolled so controlled once you have to specify the value prop on the actual on the actual input itself and if you don't do that it assumes that it's an uncontrolled um, it's an uncontrolled component and so it's not going to apply the changes uh, it's not gonna how do I say this so uncontrolled inputs take their value from the default value prop and when the that particular component so in this case when that particular input is mounted in the DOM its value attribute gets set to the default value and after that point you know you can type in it and you don't have to update your state or anything like that you can still do it but you don't have to do it in order to see the changes because with um with controlled inputs as you type you have to constantly keep updating the value prop so that your changes actually come into effect and let me see react playground is there such a thing uh controlled input uh well i think they had some sort of do they have a playground here maybe they don't hmm code sandbox react base fiddle okay so there we go yeah 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 that's that's gonna be perfect for example uh okay so in hello let's say that we have uh extends no that, so we need construct props super props and I'm gonna say this state equals an object input one just an empty string and let's render uh, an input here and we're going to well, actually let's render two inputs so input type text 
and we're gonna say default value of hello world and then another input that's going to actually have a value and it's going to be this state input okay now let's run this real quick and see if it works uh, it doesn't work um, is this what you're not happy about okay Close regular ex what regular expression? Oh, value. Okay. Come on. There we go. What else? Right. What's the problem? Now? Come on. Default value. Sorry for this. Um, going off course a little bit. I'll get right back into it. Just come on. There's there's nothing there. That text value. Beautiful chest X. Yes. Hmm. There's no what? What? Lord. That makes no sense. A little, a little embarrassing. Constructor props, super props, the state. Come on, that that just makes no sense. There is nothing there. Return. And then we. Dev, dev, okay, that was weird, huh? Okay, okay, we're back on track. Um, so here we have our controlled component and our uncon is that what they're called one second make sure controlled okay and then Okay, yeah. yeah, so controlled and uncontrolled components, right? So on the left we have our uncontrolled components. Um, essentially what it does is it just gets the default value and it sets it as the value attribute on the input, right? And then underneath that we have the controlled component, which we are providing directly the value attribute. So that means we're telling React, hey, 
I want you to keep track of the value attribute that I'm feeding into this input and make sure that in the DOM that's what it is. And that's why as we type, nothing changes because this state input is still an empty string, right? And if I change it to something else, you can see that it changes, but I'm trying to type right now, by the way. Uh, but as I'm trying to type, nothing happens because it doesn't get updated. The state doesn't get updated anyway. And so with controlled, um, uh, this set state with Uh, with controlled inputs, you have to listen to the change event for the input and then update your state or whatever that value is coming from accordingly. And uh -huh. set state. Oh. That's the trick. Yeah, and as you can see now, I can start typing, and that is because we're when, when the input changes, when the input on change event fires, we update our state with the new value, and so it keeps adding, and React takes care of that. However, let's say that we actually do what we do in here, which is I'm going to find it real quick. So if we find our component, uh, which is API data filters, okay, let's get rid of some of this. Okay, there we go. This is, nope, nested block test, nested test block, okay, there it is. And attributes, you can see we don't actually have, um, because we didn't specify a default, we don't have our text attribute, which is down here, uh, our content attribute, I'm sorry. And so we don't have a default, and essentially what happens is that, oh, will pass down as null, I believe, uh, undefined, it will pass down as undefined. And so let's say that when we initialize our state, we say, okay, our input should be this, uh, should be props dot input. However, we're not defining input in here, right? And so what's gonna happen is that React is going to complain about that. So right now it doesn't care, uh, essentially, okay, hold on, let's, rerun that right now it doesn't care because at this point what react sees oh oh i can't see that uh yeah probably can't open the frame in this well, maybe i can open a new tab no can't do that okay um but As we start typing, our component now actually receives a value. Before that, I was getting value equals undefined because that's what this was. This state input was undefined, and so value was getting undefined, and so React was saying, oh, okay, this is not a controlled input, therefore it's an uncontrolled input. And it says it right here in the warning, a component is changing an uncontrolled input of type text to be controlled. Input elements should not switch from uncontrolled to controlled or vice versa. You need to decide between using a controlled or uncontrolled input element for the lifetime of the component. <clears throat> so essentially when you're setting up your um, inputs, when you're rendering different things, you need to figure out, hey, is this something that I'm going to control? And so I'm going to keep track of its value in my state or somewhere else, you know, maybe in a component higher up, or is this something that 
you know, I, I don't really need in my component because maybe the form is going to submit. You know, you're going to submit the form in the end and you don't really need that value in your, in your JavaScript. That's fine. Um, so in that case, use an uncontrolled component. The difficulty with uncontrolled components, from my experience, is when you have nested components and your subcomponent doesn't actually have a state of its own, but instead, um, you know, it has it feeds the value for the input from props. So if at that point you choose default value, as in you choose an uncontrolled component, you're going to have a hard time updating the value of that uncontrolled input because you know default value will change as your props change but react will no longer care that because the input has been initialized and set up in the dom okay that was a long um sidetrack of me sorry about that again but i felt that was important to clarify a little bit so let's go back and restore our default for our content and reloading should no longer produce any errors once we start typing so i'm gonna add another nested test right and i'm gonna go to the block and message no longer happens okay Cool. So that's fun. Uh, but this is our standard hello world component, right? We need to beef it up a little bit. So how are we going to do this? It's quite easy. We are going to uh, oh, do a couple of things, actually. Let's change this to div instead of just a paragraph. And we'll put this maybe as a heading, okay? And down here under the heading is where we're going to use the new inner blocks, right? And inner blocks. So I need to update this right here. So it's going to have the style, then it's going to have heading. Okay, and then what I need to do is inner box content. Okay, now I would really like to see what is inside of inner blocks content and how we can manipulate that potentially to tweak things a little bit and yeah right now let's start without any of the layouts without defining layouts can we do that uh, no wrong wrong with me layouts optionally with layouts okay so layouts is optional okay that's that's cool um, so let's reload the page and let's see what happens here. So we're going to add our comp component again. And there we go. We have something. We have a UI of some sort, right? This is our UI for nested components. And we can add a block. We can insert one of the most used ones, right? Uh, okay so that's nice and right now essentially what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be uh, let's use this one okay Okay, it's tab R. Thanks, cool. Okay, and we essentially just can add as many 
components in here. So that's that's the basic basic way to use nested components, right? You can just say, hey, here's a place where you can insert any sort of component that you want. Okay, well, that's that's nice, I guess. Um, it's not a, a heading. And actually, I would like to also add separate. Oh, <laughs> that that didn't look great there. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's that's something, right? Now let's head update and see when. Right. So this is just component. Okay, uh, what about we take a look at what, instead of nested block, let's go ahead and add a breakpoint in here. Okay, that way we're going to be able to inspect exactly what we have. Oh, come on. Two. Okay, there we go. Here's our brick and let's see what our attributes are. Layout undefined. Okay, so we didn't provide a layout, so we're not getting one. That's fine. The question that I have is, is it, that's all we get? Attributes? Really? Huh. Create attributes. Hmm. Inner blocks content. We might have to deep dive um, deep into what inner blocks content does. So we can see how it works. But right now, let's get rid of the stack block, block style, local attributes. Yeah, we don't really have much here. Interesting. I sense potential magic here. Hmm, something's being magicked. Let's see. So can we figure out how that works? Inner blocks content block content. It just renders block content. Okay. I guess. What is block content? Oh. Inner blocks content with context block content. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can try and find. Uh, from node modules at WordPress components There's not, uh, okay I probably need to I see npm install right because new packages seems seem to have been added here that I'm still missing. I should probably be using yarn to make things go faster. Okay, there we go. We also don't have WordPress components. Hmm. That's interesting. WordPress, no components. Okay, are you going to be able to find it this time? Nope with contacts from WordPress components. So maybe it's actually in here. Blocks, components. 
Maybe not. Hmm. Okay. Let's do the book the other way with context. Where is that defined? Okay, there it is. Components hardware with context. So React to opt into receiving React context into a component as props. Defining a key. Context receive a notional mapping function. Interesting. Okay, but where's that context though? Oh, does it? Oh, hmm. Okay, well, let's see a nested block and see what we have in there as well. Okay, so we're gonna continue and we'll hit this break. Okay, so I, what I really want to see is, is there any way we can access the information in terms of what kind of blocks we have inside of the, inside of, I had the name inside of inner blocks <laughs> and oh this context nothing in the context hmm interesting Hmm. So how is it even possible to do dynamic blocks in this in this way then? I guess maybe not. When I when I think about it it kinda makes sense because in order to Well, actually there is one very easy way we can check. And that is by actually adding a new Yeah yeah, there we go. Is it still locked up? There, that does the trick. Okay, uh, team. Our team one is dynamic, right? Pretty sure it is. Okay, let's hit update. And let's view the post. Okay, so it still loads in, right? Oh, no. Granted, though, oh, yeah, all right, that's just the same info repeating. Yeah, so it loads it just fine. Okay. But that is when we have, when we save the actual block, so when we have a static block. Can we make a dynamic block? That's the question though. Uh, team. Okay. Yeah. So our function should be getting called, yeah. So our dynamic block function gets called on the front end still. Okay, 
Now, what if we say that our block will actually return nothing, right? Because that's how save return null. So let's pretend that our block is dynamic, okay? Just for a second. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to work right now because we don't have any information in our, in our attributes with which you, we could actually reproduce, like recreate. Um, the individual ones. So, well, let's just see what happens, right? I would say let's try and where's there our block type so nested test right and render nested test block Okay, and we should get some attributes. The problem is I'm pretty sure that it's not going to have what we need. Nope. Well, actually, let's return what we have in here. Okay, so I've changed the block to be a dynamic block instead of well, instead of a static block. Uh, that's probably not gonna. This is not gonna like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I delete it? Yes, I can. There we go. That's fine. And let's test. Okay, and let's. Nope, not in there. Um, <laughs> image cover image. And then let's add our team head update. See what we have on the front end, right? And we got nothing. Why do we have nothing? We should have at least something. No if you block columns, no that's that's the other one. Huh. What? Did we have to define somewhere else that it's a dynamic block? I don't think so. Save return no. Or is it because I didn't actually change anything in here? Um, okay, so let's change the color and let's add some mess, right? Head update, head refresh here. Okay, yeah. But as you can see, it's just the content and the color, which are the attributes that we've defined. But we have no knowledge whatsoever of what's inside, inside of our... Hmm inside of our inner blocks placeholder let's call it that um, can we get a reference to this right. uh, what do we have in here Refresh this. Is it still going to save it here though? No, it's probably not gonna work here either. Yeah. Um actually that that wasn't too bad. Okay, so our recover image actually get console. No. Okay. Refs props contest. Block list and 
what if we try to save this as a variable temp1 context block list nothing hmm Nothing refs, nothing state. Interesting. No props, nothing. Just we have nothing. Huh. Interesting. Children. Hmm. That is so bizarre. Maybe it doesn't work yet. Maybe it's something that will be planned later on and added on to the API. I don't know. Huh. It seems like at least the way that I can think of, we can't really seem to get access to what is inside of our inner blocks. Unless, of course, we don't do what inner blocks does, right? See, which nobody's stopping us from doing that, right? Technically speaking, well, no, because that just renders the block content. What context block content? Hmm. No, because then it just renders that. Yeah, I don't know. Can we even access those? Can we not have dynamic blocks that are um, that use inner blocks? That's gonna be a little sad. I mean, maybe eventually they'll add it. Uh, okay, let's see. Blocks with a default set of blocks, editable or not. Okay. Support block nesting, inner blocks component. Oh. 
Okay, so essentially it's it's pretty much a whole other Gutenberg inside of Gutenberg. Inception, anyone? Um, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, wait, block, blocks children are available, though it's block and their blocks property. Wait. Can be accessed from a components edit and save. Oh. Props are inner blocks and updated via edits set inner blocks prop. I don't see that. I must have missed something, obviously. Um, save, edit, nest this block. Yeah, let's just see what we have here, right? So inside of edit props dot enter blocks. I'm pretty sure this is not here. Or I'm just not seeing it. Oh. Like this? No, that's different. Enter blocks, no. Yeah, let's just use this. No honor blocks. What? I'm so confused. Mm hmm. Block off right back. Shuba does not yet support restrictions on block types allowed within a block. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, So are we saying that we were able to and no longer able to? Block API create block accept third argument in our blocks. Oops, block right. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's super interesting. But I am trying to understand what happened because from the original description Six explorer. It says that blocks children are available via its block dot enter blocks property, and can be accessed from a components edit and save implementations props dot enter blocks and update via edits set enter blocks prop. Okay. Well, we don't have set enter block. Props not here. 
not here either. So yeah, something something's a mess here. Maybe it got changed while in the process of the pull request. I mean, this was open like uh, I'm almost well, almost three months ago now. So I guess it got changed. Hmm. So how are we supposed to access that then? Like, how does that work? Is there no way that we can access what blocks we have? Huh. I want to be able to, you know, break stuff. <laughs> uh, Model with this in mind, should be very simple to extend in our blocks or default set of blocks. Okay, No, we don't really have anything here. And the columns one doesn't seem to do anything either. I just use this inner blocks and that's it. End of story. I wonder if I can see the original pull request. Uh, yep, probably in commits. Around 30 from November. Support for person generating. Three is nested. New block edit to revise in our blocks. Set in our blocks.
So that's unfortunate. I I can't seem to find a way to to achieve that. Like our component doesn't know anything about what's going on inside inside of it. Like it's just like I don't know. There's something there. But that's about it. Nothing else. I promise. Pretty sure that's not gonna do anything, but might as well try, right? Okay, yes, I want to reload the page. I wish there would be something in here that would expose the data that we need, but there isn't, like nothing. This one doesn't even receive a context. Weird. Okay. Um, well, I think that's that's enough to try and poke around with it. Um, but to answer that question, uh, at the moment, I don't think that there is a way to change the components that are nested inside of our um, inside of our component inside of our block. Sorry, let's use the Gutenberg terminology. So currently I have no way either on save, it seems like. I don't save or on well, hold on, what if we do what if we do a ref here? Would that work? Uh, Hold on. Uh, okay. Let me give that one more try and see what happens. Oh, and get rid of this return. No. Of course. Reload. Add our image in here.
and update right and we should see something or nothing pop up hmm cash yeah i think that was some cash okay yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, delete this one nest test we are an image here saving no as the same thing as it is there isn't it yep props nothing in here nope uh 13 yeah we got nothing yep so right now our block doesn't know that it has anything inside of it you know um i guess we do get the classes come on oh uh, do i need to get rid of okay Huh. here's something that is interesting so apparently huh I like that that that's a little trick um your render callback you can you can have it on or off like it seems like I'm not sure how that would affect things if you're actually saving uh like if you're actually saving this in the back end but i guess you can save this in the back end and then just override it on the front end huh that was interesting yeah so as you can see our render callback was overriding uh what was saved in the back end that is interesting huh <gasps> oh you know how this could potentially be used but well, that's not ideal uh, but potentially you can have like a restricted content a block for restricted content okay and in here you just give the message that people would see if they don't have access to it okay and then you could in theory conditionally register this callback it would have to be a global thing like you know does the current user have access to this content and if they do then register with the render callback so that we can show them the content that they have access to anyway i got sidetracked again um well the only thing that we know Actually, maybe we don't even have that. Uh, nest test, no, not even that. Oh, uh, yeah, has two columns. I guess we are, they are using has columns, columns that's from attributes. Yep, there is no way for you to know whether there's something inside your block or nothing inside your block at least at least in the current implementation the way that i understand it um you know and obviously i might be missing something quite obvious but to me it seems that way that your component just doesn't know about what's inside of it and there might be a way around this but i'm not sure at this point what that would look like um and until we find a way to get access to the components that are in here we can't really do anything with them we can change them i mean we could change them in a different way but that like with filters 
we can change the components and what they're saving and so on. The problem with that is that filters are global right now, it seems like, and there's no way within our component to say, turn on this filter and then turn it off real quick and turn it off so that it only applies to the components that are inside of here. Maybe there's a way to do that. I'm not sure. But yeah, essentially there's not much we can do. Sorry, we can make them fade in or make them do anything. We can modify them. We can change them in any way right now. That's disappointing. Well, I will definitely keep uh, an eye out for any updates around inner blocks and how they work. What's the long term thing? And I might ask around and see if I'm misunderstanding something, if I'm missing something. Or we really just don't have access to the components that are the blocks. I keep using both words. Um, sorry if, I'm, if that's confusing. Uh, but yeah, I'll have to ask around and see if there's any way that we can access the blocks. Well, a little underwhelming. I was a little bit more excited about nested blocks when I started. Um, I'm so excited, you know, it's getting it's getting Gutenberg in the right direction for sure. Because without nested blocks at all, it couldn't quite compete with, you know, any of the page builders. I don't know if it's that its purpose anyway, but yeah, it, it makes it way more flexible once we have the ability to nest components. And it's a good step forward, I think, you know, we have the ability to do that and it will it will only get better from here on, right? Um, yeah. Again, good job to everyone that's working on Gutenberg. I, yeah, the team is amazing. And everyone, whether you're testing, whether you're submitting issues, whether you're running it on your own site, it's all part of making Gutenberg better and ready for the whole WordPress community. With that said, I think I'm now going to, um, I think I'm going to call the stream and be done for tonight. Again, a little underwhelming, but we'll see. I'll keep my eye out on what we have in terms of um, you know, what we have in terms of nested blocks, of inner, inner blocks, and, you know, if there's any way to access them at all or not. And next week, on the 1st of March, um, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to try and wrap up my unsplash api integration which is almost done really the only thing right now is that the image block doesn't parse the html and i asked about that earlier and it seems like that just might be how it is i don't know uh, i might have to submit an issue on that, about that and or if i have updates about inner blocks and nesting blocks i might do a stream about that with that said, I think that's that's uh, that's about it. I'm going to switch over to <laughs> to an overlay that says "Going Live Shortly." As always, it was great, great hangout with you. Thank you for the questions, and I hope to see you next week. Have a good one, everyone, and 